Welcome to the Bossier City Council regular meeting Tuesday, June 6th. I have the invocation by Council Member Scott Irwin and the Pledge of Allegiance by Council Member Jeff Pree. Please stand. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for, for all of the blessings that you have bestowed on our community. We, we thank you, Lord, for each person who is here today at the City Council meeting. We pray for those in our community, Lord, that uh, could be sick and are hurting, Lord. Lord, we pray for our military uh, that, that is protecting us both here and abroad and for wisdom for our nation, our state, and for us in the City Council meeting today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Just join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Mr. Montgomery? Here. Mr. Larkin? Here. Mr. Irwin? Here. Mr. Darby? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Free? Here. Mr. Harvey? Here. All present. Okay. Approve the minutes of the May 16, 2017 regular meeting and dispense with the reading. So moved. Second. Council, please cast your vote. <coughs> we have a nod. Mr. Larkin? I pardon? Second. Thank you. Council, we have one add-on uh, request. It's, it would be item number 27 under new business. Introduce an ordinance to appropriate $120,000 to come from the 2017 sales tax bond issue to be used to provide for Benoit Bayou drainage study and mapping to be used as required for proper future development of lands generally located north of I-220 and between Airline Drive and Swan Lake Road. And that will be a first reading. I move that we add this to the agenda. Sir. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Need a motion to approve this. Agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. Questions? Council, please cast your vote. And we have with us Ms. Lisa Johnson, President of the Bozier Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. you got a so there's your B. Bozier. And just as we do it in Bozier, like a boss. This is, this is my update for you on the marketing um, program that you're assisting us with. I'm Lisa Johnson, President of the Bossier Chamber, and it's a pleasure to be here today, Mr. President, Councilman, Mayor. And um, we are so excited about this program that you have entrusted us with at the Bossier Chamber to market and brand Bossier. And as you see, it is called BeBossier.com. And when I came to you last year and I asked you for this funding, it was... <laughs> Um, about building the foundation for this marketing platform. The foundation is being built and it is growing every day. I'm going to throw a few numbers at you today to just let you know how things are going and um, then tell you what we can anticipate next. So this BeBosier.com, this is a site that is a blog site where um, our, um, our consultant that we hired, and allow me to stop real quick and say thank you to Sarah Abair with All Y'all Media is our consultant on this. And on behalf of our marketing chairman, Mike McSwain, who keeps us in, in tow all the time to make sure, and our communications director, Jessica Hemingway, between these three individuals, I have no chance in the world of <laughs> anything because they're making sure that we are doing the work for you and the people's work. And so uh, with this blog, that uh, has, be, has been created with bebosier.com. It um, was stood up in uh, mid to late March. We have had, uh, we've got 20 posts already on there. The purpose of this is to post good news stories. And it's freelance writers that are assisting us with that about Bossier City and Bossier Parish. So 20 posts are up. 
And uh, without any really good marketing and paid for promotion, we are seeing that our top visitors to the website are um, Bossier City, obviously with 30, uh, right at 33%, and Dallas is at 27%. And then we have Shreveport and Houston right behind that. So markets that we know that are very familiar to us and uh, looking at our area for whatever type of relocation, if it's residential or for business. Now, how do we make that go viral? We um, talked about a lot, I talked about when I came to you, a lot of social media, Facebook, Instagram, and things of that nature. Facebook is the most easiest place to, to do these types of videos and share these posts. So on the blog, we have entrepreneurs in um, Bossier only that have done business with the city, opened their business here, and we do a Facebook Live video with them, Q&A, um, with our host being uh, Sean Green, and then these videos continue to get traction because they're the boss. The root word of Bozier is boss, so like a boss, we're getting great response from that. Um, the uh, Chef Daryl video, like a boss, has reached, and this one was just done Memorial Day, has reached nearly 1,500 with 567 uh, unique viewers, 63 views, but it was shared 13 times. And um, a, a military with Barry Regula as, um, was done as an honorary uh, commander of the 93rd Squadron, reached over 4,000 folks with 25 um, likes, and uh, 16 shares for a total of 19 shares. And our very first one was with Grant Knuckles with Twisted Root. And uh, it reached nearly 10,000 people, 4,400 views, 22 shares. So that kind of gives you an idea of the videos. Now, when we share our blog stories, those good news stories from the bebosier.com, the um, we have a blog on there that's called Five Hidden Gems in Bossier, talking about these unique places in Bossier. And um, it had 94 shares on Facebook, and it's still growing today. I've already updated these numbers since we prepared this as of yesterday, and it needs to be updated again. And that's what it's about, is going viral, sharing this information. Um, yesterday I shared because um, we had a new blog come up um, and crime and, and statistics and all are a hot topic in Northwest Louisiana and criminal justice reform is a hot topic at the uh, state legislature. And so uh, a blog was written about is Bozier safe? Here's what the statistics say and it is a great story with the growth that's happening in this area, how we maintain and keep those numbers in check. That was shared 22 times from the original page, and from one of those shares, it was shared another 17 times with positive comments all along. So this is what we're looking for. <coughs> this is what we're, we're wanting uh, to go viral, and we're wanting folks to uh, see. With our Barksdale Air Force Base, with the uh, open house of the air show, we did a very simple video of the bombers coming across. and reached over 56,000 people, 20,000 views, 173 shares. So it tells you where the folks are interested in. So we're getting more military, we're getting more education uh, stuff up on there about our public ed education. Uh, since we've launched this campaign uh, the last day of March, the B. Bozier campaign has been up on the Bozier Chamber billboards and Lamar uh, donated a few more as well. There have been over 27,000 spots on local billboards to share the good news with a value of almost $10,000 that has come through the Bossier Chamber and Lamar in assisting through this program. So we're trying to do our part as well in being your partner. What's next is we have an annual manual that's coming out that will talk about um, the area <laughs> And uh, with all the statistics and the listings and great pictures and all that kind of good stuff, because people still want something uh, in hand. Uh, we have a new video series that's coming out that uh, we can't share with you just yet in a public forum. But if you want to call me one at a time, 
<laughs> I might give you a hint, but, uh, but we want it to be a big splash. And so very excited about that. Merchandising is a top priority, which is something that we talked about. And, um, and then believe it or not, as we've been doing this and Barksdale Air Force Base has been doing their meetings with their community partnerships, we're building an even more closer relationship with Barksdale for all of those folks that are moving into the area uh, for all of the missions that we have out there. So that kind of gives you a, uh, an update on this as far as the budget goes. To do all of this, we've only spent about 16% of the budget thus far. Can I answer any questions? Thank you. A wonderful presentation. Thanks, Lisa. Y'all handle the rest of the day like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Unfinished business. Hearing of appeal to review the recommendation of demolition and removal of a dilapidated structure located at the following legal address, 2390 Barksdale Boulevard, Bossier City, Louisiana. Good afternoon, Council. Uh, this property was condemned back in November 7th of 2016 due to the condition of the structure, uh, dilapidated, uh, open, unsecured, and uh, Robin Harville, Council. Um, to represent the owners. We've been uh, successful in providing notice to the conventional owner, Pintail Holdings Investments. Uh, Mr. Summa Stelly, representative of the company, is here today. What he has shared with me that apparently they've had a, a tenant that they've had some issues with that's supposed to have been working on this. But So they're looking forward to uh, judicially evict him so that they can undertake the appropriate repairs. And so Mr. Stelly is here today to make that proposal to the Council. Who's a tenant? Do you mind me asking? Unless you want to speak first. Um, <clears throat> Y'all could state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Aaron Wilson, attorney for Pintel Land. And your address? Uh, 707 Benton Road, Suite 125. My name is Summa Stelly. I'm representing Pintel Holdings, LLC. I'm one of the member managers, and we're at 1815 Benton Road up All here. All right, thank you. Uh, Council, the, uh, the tenant is Excuse my pronunciation. It's Musli Alu Bobby, and um, they they did a lease to purchase agreement back in <coughs> 2014. He has he made substantial payments and was supposed to undertake the renovations of the property, but did not. Um, it it came to their attention in uh, their being Pintail's attention in uh, May when they got received a letter from Miss Harville uh, that the repairs hadn't been made and that the property was condemned. They're in the process of filing a suit to evict him and to nullify the lease to purchase agreement. And once they have uh, possession again, they will make the necessary repairs. How so, long will that process take? Um, well, we um, <clears throat> we we got we have to get um, a judge has got to let us have permit um, access back to the property. So um, whenever that happens, I'll be meeting the uh, I'll be meeting my general contractor. It'll be Federal Construction out of Shreveport. Uh, Mark and Chase Pittman uh, run that, and um, we'll be uh, bringing that up immediately. I mean, uh, I'll pull a permit, and uh, I'll have people over there working. When will you pull a permit? As soon as we get possession, the, like the day after. 60 days, 90? Uh, 90 days should be sufficient, and if it's not, we'll come back before the council and request additional time. Has the lawsuit been filed? It has not. When is uh, it this, uh, Christopher Stahl is representing them in that suit. I'm just here on this matter today. When is it supposed to be filed? Uh, when he returns from the CLE in Florida that he's at. You, you've had it since 2014. Have they had it leased from you and they haven't made any improvements? And you own the building and y'all didn't know what? I'm selling it to him on a, on a lease purchase agreement. And he was under contract. He was supposed to make those, make those repairs, show me proof of insurance. And so he hasn't done that? He has not Since 2014. That. Correct. And you didn't know it. Well, I did know it. I've, I've communicated with him multiple times. I tried to give him, I mean, we tried to be fair. He put a substantial amount of money down, and I just tried to work with the guy. And, uh, every, and as we get these code violations in, I would go back over there and talk to him. And uh, it took to come down to where I just had to take legal action. I'm going to tell you, this is in, in my district. It's about 10 years too late, in my opinion, uh, of us condemning it. And, Jimmy, if I can do it, I'd like to make a motion we go ahead and uh, tear down the building. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think if they if these guys were representing what they represented were in the process, they could have already filed suit. They could have already started the process, and they haven't. So, I mean, I think you're well within reason to make a motion to that effect. Well, so, if I could say, I, I only bought the house. Excuse me. In, or the property excuse in 2014. Me. Wait, One second. Do I have a second? Well, I'll second. Are y'all? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, you go ahead. I'll ask counsel something. In a minute. Well, I only bought the property in 2014, so um, just a couple months after I bought the property, we went into this lease purchase agreement, and uh, the gentleman just hadn't pulled his part of the his end of the the, the, the deal. So we're trying to move on it. It just seems 2014. That's a long time not to do anything with it. You know, counsel, if you if you haven't gone by to the building, it's been a wreck for. For years, and I'm sure Mickey and, Jim and Kenny would tell you that I've been on them for years to get this thing. It's it's a it's horrible. It's just stores junk. They store cars that's you know needs to be hauled off. You know it has been cleaned up lately, but nothing as far it's still a condemned building. You know so that's why I made the motion. I, you, part so I can understand you you have been uh, communicating with the owner. No. With, Property standards. Oh, okay. The person that owned the building, where well, I don't know, did Bill own it? I'm, uh, Bill Norris. No, did he own it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Bill, Norris. Bill died a few years ago, and, and it was a, it was a wreck, years before he he passed away. I mean, again, it, it does. Um, I, since I've done lease purchases before, I, I don't. You don't necessarily follow those as closely as you might. If it was just a lease, uh, since the conclusion of your contract is, is you're separated from the property, and so it's not it doesn't seem to me that it's unreasonable that that they, you know, now that this has all come to their attention, that that we should afford them the reason to or the means to get the property back. Um, I, but I was I was trying to make sure I understood what what. Your representative is going to do. You're, you're going to file suit, get the property back. And once you get the property back, you are representing to us that you're going to bring the property up to standards. Is is that right? Absolutely. What? And I, I would just like, like to point that. out that the notice of condemnation was recorded in November, but Pintel was not made aware of it until May 2nd of last year or of this year when Miss Harville sent them notification of it. The, all, all that was done was notices were posted, and Mr. Alabadi is the only one that would have seen that. Do, do you live in Bossier? I do. I actually, I've lived in Bossier since I've lived here nine years, and then I just moved out to Kingston. That's Pale Station. Yeah. See, Tim, that's, that's what gets me. A year ago. If you're a property owner and where you got a lease purchase, don't you want to go by and see if that building's being taken care of or being upgraded at all? In three years, we had not done that? Am I... Am I over the top or what? Yes, uh, I would just like to verify that uh, Go ahead. that the the letter that the notice letter was signed for by an individual in their office after it was mailed on the eighth of November. Yep, so so there's somebody I, did sign for the letter in their office to let you know that, that someone in their office was aware of this. Okay. I was not aware of that just now until now. So they did. So this has been going on since November? Yes, sir. Also, if if we were to, uh, if you do decide to let them have this thing uh, and redo it, uh, the estimate is $103,000 to fix it, and we would require a structural engineer to make sure that this thing was structurally sound before the permits would be issued for uh, for that kind of money, just to let you know. You aware of that, Tim? I'm who was that? Mr. Stelly is aware, well aware of that. Yeah. What is the what's the downside of? I mean, if it's if they're representing that they're. They're trying to get legal possession of it, and then they're representing that they're going to fix it. What? 
so the so the downsize is just going to sit there during that period of time while they're getting possession of it. Um, is there any other? I mean, it's been there all this time. It seems the downside has been the yes. The downside is that it's been there for years and years and years. That my my question would be, what's ninety more days? Because because uh, I'm I'm tired of digging with that one structure yeah. on the yes, corner sir, of Barstow Boulevard right there. I, I felt it necessary know. to bring it up. Yeah, well, if you've been digging it as long as I have, it's it's, it's horrible. Yes, sir. even I, when the guy lived there, I knew him. It was horrible, you know. Well, is there a is there a drop dead date that, that would come? I mean, would it just is it like is it ninety days and I mean that is all of this a Kind of at the mercy of the judge who hears it. And uh, whenever uh, my regular counsel, whenever Chris gets back in town and files the suit, um, then uh, we'll, um, I'll know more. But within 24, 48 hours of the judge giving us possession of the property, there'll be a permit pulled. General contractors will be in there working within a week. I mean, it, we, we're not gonna, we're not gonna wait. We're just gonna get it done. And, um, well, like Mickey said, you got to have a structural engineer first come out there, and I got to get a judge to give me possession of it first, and then. We'll and how long would that take? I mean, we. Do we if if Mr. Scoff filed suit tomorrow when he got back, we could have a court date within four weeks. So sixty days would be plenty. That sixty days would be plenty, but I, we would prefer ninety days to make sure that we don't run into any issues. Well, why not sixty, and you can come back if you're having issues. 60 would be acceptable as well. And there are no issues. So. Yeah, I just need a little time. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote to tear it down and, and if y'all vote to keep it, I would just want you to, I ask you in the same 60 days to go by and look at the building. You know, because everything well, that, that, that hasn't well been done wrong. yet. But <clears throat> what's the guarantee, Mr. Hall, that what would we need in place to? ensure that that's done and if it's not then well you we could make an order to demolish to demolish and suspend it for 60 days and if the 60 days the permit hadn't been taken out and all the accomplishments made it'd be demolished i mean that that has the uh the fact that you've already taken action and suspend it for 60 days let them have 60 days to do it what what is concerning to me is the representation is we're in the process of filing suit and whether Mr. Stahl's here or any other lawyers here, they could have filed suit before they showed up today to show they're in the pro the process is actually being done. So I, I, I can't tell you if it's going to be four weeks, eight weeks, whatever it's going to be. I don't even know what the process is under the agreement, but obviously it's some kind of summary process if they can get a four-week hearing. So, I mean, the only way to ensure that you don't go back through this process again is to order it to be demolished but suspend it for 60 days to allow them to transfer title and take out a permit. Y'all made my motion to give them 60 days, uh, have it demolished, uh, and give them 60 days to do it. Suspend it. Suspend it. Demolish. I second that. I think Tony motion. has something too. Yeah, Mr. Williams, I, I, besides it being an eyesore, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering after looking at the pictures, have we had any instances that have involved uh, police and or rescue? Uh, have we had? Is it a is it a crack house or anything like that? I mean, is it being a safe haven for? I don't, I don't have any knowledge of anything like that. Um, of course, my family is prepared to address that question. Okay. I'm sure you can make, make it in a little time. Okay. Thank you. Any other that, questions? That's all I have. All right. The motion, just to clarify, is that. If, it's, if you hadn't started and pulled the permit, started construction in 60 days, then the building would be demolished. Yes, Ron. Or, sorry. Uh, yes, sir. So I just want to make sure y'all are clear. Is that correct, strictly, correctly stated, Mr. Ron? Yeah, there will be an order that the property be demolished and be suspended for 60 days to allow them to have transfer of title and take out a permit. Right. And if that's done, the, the order of demolition will be dissolved. Okay. Phyllis, are you clear on that? Yes, sir. But I, I don't understand that. If if the if sixty days gets here and they they're a week away or something from the process, so how how does how does that how does that operate? I mean, you just asked for ninety, and and so what is the 
like in 60 days, no matter what happens, if we vote this way, that's gone. It, it, it wouldn't matter if he was a week away from getting it in 60 days, right? Right. I want to speak against that motion. I, it's just, it just doesn't seem fair to me. I mean, it's just well, he, just, he just stated he needs four weeks to bring lawsuit and get it settled. That may be an underestimate, but it, within 90 days, we can have something done. That's what I was trying to. Guys, let me, let me tell you something else. <laughs> Sam has been, is Sam in here? Sam has been in, in the last several months, probably more than that, trying to clean up Barstow Boulevard. There's all these tire shops and we, all these cars that I call in that the, the mayor knows and, you know, we're trying to get it cleaned up. And things like this, is, it's not going to help me get, to get, get that neighborhood cleaned up. That whole neighborhood has got houses that need to be torn down. And this is just one right on Barstow Boulevard, you know, so. Does he have an option, Mr. Hall, to uh, stay our ordinance of condemnation in 60 days, the, the 26th Judicial Court? Yeah, I mean, you can always apply for a uh, restraining order if you choose to do so that. He does have an avenue to stop the does. procedure he if does. you don't get it done in 60 days. So. Anyway, is there any other discussion? I don't have any further to add. Okay. Any discussion from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, fellas. Adopt an ordinance to approve the amendment of the utility public private partnership P3 owner engineer agreement for $1,042,755 to be paid for out of the utility operating funds. Amendment number one, owner engineer agreement. Final reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt an ordinance appropriating $25,000 from the 2017 EMS Capital and Contingency Fund to purchase Physio Control Titan 3G modems for use with Physio Control Life Pack 15 cardiac monitors. Final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt an ordinance to appropriate $60,000 to come from the Hotel Motel Tax Fund to be used to purchase and install a new phone system for the Bossier City Multi-Purpose Arena CenturyLink. Final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? <coughs> Council, please cast your vote. Adopt an ordinance assessing a $3 restoration fee on each ticket sold for any and all events at the CenturyLink Center. Final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Is that, um, is that any and all events leaves the latitude on those ones that we said we're not doing this on? Is that, does, does this change the? Ticketed concept? through Ticketmaster. Jimmy, please. You know, yeah. I know we've had a lot of discussions lately, but ticketed through Ticketmaster. So, uh, again, just it caught my eye here that since it says each ticket sold for any and all events doesn't seem to limit that is am I reading that wrong or what is you, that a problem what are you looking at for an exception to uh, that like the home builders thing that we talked about and these uh, events that they sell tickets to there were there were a, a number of events that we said were not included in this um, so this, since this says That's any and all events, it seems to contradict that. Um, well, I think Sam and Rebecca stated the same thing. Yeah. It's not a ticketed event. It's tickets that are, that are given out, and I think David went on the news and explained the same thing. Just ticketed events through Ticketmaster. The Home Builders Show, I think those tickets are given out there, so it's not a ticketed event through Ticketmaster. And you can't buy them online you, like you can through Ticketmaster. Yeah, if, if, if that's if, if this just doesn't cover that, that's fine. It just seems to contradict what we um, said. And if if, um, if if we're so so, you're confident that things like that, this does not cover that. Yeah, we've had about four thousand emails 
on these. Uh, I'm pretty confident that it won't cover those. And if it do, if there's some compliance issue with that, we'll come back and amend it. rectify yeah. it. Yeah. We can always make an amendment to it. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt an ordinance appropriating $10,000 from the general fund fund balance to co-sponsor the traveling Vietnam War wall on June 8th through 13th, 2017. Final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. New witness, business? I'm sorry. Witness opening of sealed bids for Fort Smith Pool Rehab. Good afternoon, Council. The engineer's estimate for this job is $275,000, and the approved budget is $275,000. Oh, there were no addendums. The first bid is from Progressive Commercial Aquatics. It's for $274,500, and the bid bond is included. What was the budget amount? Two seventy-five. Okay. I just didn't see it. I move we accept the reading of this bid. <coughs> Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Witness opening of sealed bids for Innovation Drive Extension Phase 1. The engineer's estimate for this job is $1,400,000, and the approved budget is $1,500,000. Mm -hmm. The first bid, oh, there was one addendum. And in that addendum, it deleted item number 65 and changed the description of item number 66. The first bid is from 2R Construction, LLC. They acknowledge the addendum. It's for $1,587,327.50. Can you read that again? One million five hundred eighty seven thousand three twenty seven point three one. Thank you. The next bid is from Best Yet Builders. They acknowledge the addendum. The bid bond is included. It's for one million three hundred twenty six thousand five hundred fifty two dollars. The next bid is from CW and W contractors. They acknowledge the addendum. The bid bond is included. It's for one million four hundred seventy five thousand nine hundred ninety six dollars and fifty cents. The next bid is from Boggs and Pool. They acknowledge the addendum. The bid bond is included. One million two hundred forty-eight thousand four hundred thirty-six dollars and ninety-three cents. The next bid is from David Lawler Construction. They acknowledge the addendum. The bid bond is included. It's for one million one hundred sixty seven thousand nine hundred sixty six dollars. <coughs> the next bid is from Fessler and Bowman. They acknowledge the addendum and the bid bond is included. It's for one million five hundred forty eight thousand seven hundred and thirteen dollars.
The next bid is from F.J. Burnell. They acknowledge the addendum. The bid bond is included. It's for $1,128,213.70. The next bid was done on BidSync. The bid bond was included. It's for J.B. James Construction. It's for $1,795,000. $469. This is the last one. Mm -hmm. And this is the last one. It's from Yorwick Construction. The addendum, they acknowledge the addendum. The bid bond is included. It's for $1,363,711. Okay. I ask that you accept the reading of these bids. So moved. Questions? Council, please cast your vote. Thank you all. Adopt a zoning ordinance, first and final reading, favorable by MPC. Petitioner Sid's Oyster Barrel, location 2119 Airline Drive, Suite 100, Bossier City, Louisiana. Request conditional use approval for the sale of high and low content alcohol for on premise consumption at a restaurant. So moved. Second. Gentlemen, this is a new restaurant venture for Bossier, um, Sid's Oyster Barrel, uh, requesting um, alcohol on-premise consumption sales at their restaurant. It is over 500 feet from the nearest church school or other um, entities we measure from. Any questions? Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Thank you, Sam. Approve report of change order number one and final change order for the Six Fountain Sewer Pump Station for an increase in the amount of $7,357. Total cost with, con with change order, $422,355. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance amending section 6-4, sale, near schools, churches, etc., of the Bossier City Code of Ordinances to include a full-time daycare center as defined in Revised Statute 17, colon 405A4, first reading. So moved. Jenny, was this requested by Second. local daycares or? This was, uh, this was actually an issue where we had a daycare that was a full-time daycare and they were looking at putting an alcohol establishment. The state allows us the opportunity to, uh, to forbid uh, alcohol to be sold within 300 you know, feet of a daycare and, and we thought it would be a good idea to prohibit that because uh, in the guidance under the statute that's cited there requires there to be at least seven children and to be a full-time daycare. So it can't affect somebody just taking care of kids in a home that are there, but it stops alcohol from being sold right next to a place where kids are being kept. Any other questions? Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance appropriating $40,000 from the general fund fund balance for a complete assessment of capability and vulnerability of information services and systems of the city of Bossier City, first reading. So moved. Second. Any questions? Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance authorizing the sale of 707 Barksdale Boulevard to Destiny Day Spa, LLC, for the appraised value pursuant to Louisiana Revised Statute 33, colon 4712.2, first reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance appropriating $15,000 from the EMS Capital and Contingency Fund to purchase a liquid spring system for trauma five, first reading. So moved. Move. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance appropriating $80,000 from the 2017 EMS Capital and Contingency Fund to purchase two vehicles for the EMS division. First reading. 
So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance appropriating $6 million to come from the 2015 LCDA Capital Projects Fund and authorizing the mayor to sign any and all documents necessary to acquire right of way property necessary for the Walter O. Bigby Carriageway, also known as Parkway Northern Extension Project. First reading. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance to approve an amendment of the utility 2014 sewer contract for engineering with Manchac Consulting Group Incorporated agreement for $4,574,200.44 amendment number two owner engineer agreement first reading. So moved. Second. Any questions from the council? Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance to approve the installation of sewer service along Hope Street for $350,000. First reading. So moved. Second. Scott, let me ask you a question, maybe a couple of questions. Sure. How many people are going to hook up to that line? Do you know or have you got an uh, This is Collins is here, and if I could defer to her, she has the exact, the exact numbers. Ms. Collins, could you state your name and address, please, for the record? Thank you. Brenda Collins, 2110 Hope Street. Um, I am representing all of Hope Street, and there's five families here today. There are 12 names listed on the petition I delivered to each of you on March the 10th, and I can tell you that all 12 of those families plan to hook up to the sewage. We have wanted this for over 25 years, so we are very eager to. There's only one family that is not. There's one home that's for sale uh, just recently, and I have not been able to get in touch with that owner who lives out of town, but I feel like they will also want to do that, but I can't say that, but I know 12 of us are. And you're in the city limits and you have city water. So. We absolutely do. We absolutely do. And it has been in the city limits since Rumor Calhoun purchased that property from the Romers. And uh, we were in the city limits then. We didn't have city water. We fought for that for a long time and were able to successfully get off of the South Bossier water system. And uh, thankfully, uh, onto the city water system. And we just really need city sewage. Why have you waited this long, I guess? I didn't wait this long. We didn't wait this long. We asked for... Uh, city sewage whenever we tried to get on city water and uh, we were turned down uh, by the council. Uh, it's, there's been two mayors, the mayor uh, DeMint, we, I mean, we worked with Mayor DeMint prior to Mr. Walker and, and, and we worked with our councilman. We thank Scott Irvin for, for bringing this to your attention and, and we, we really appreciate any support that you can give us for that. We really need city sewage. It, yeah, it, it's, I'd like to just add, you know, uh, since it last came up, Parkway High School has been built, which isn't very far from your area. That, that's exactly right. Uh, and there's just one big track of land now. Y'all used to be kind of out far, but you're not as far out as you were. The city has grown. That's south. true. And there's the trailer park, Pecan Valley Trailer Park, that is further south than we are on the other side of the highway. And they have been on city sewage for my 25 years of being there. So it's just time to... It's time. It's time. Any other comments from the council? What um, I wanted to ask Mr. Hudson to share with the council what will be involved in the installation of sewer. Uh, well, of course, no design has uh, been accomplished yet, but we will uh, and I visited with Ben Rauschenbach about a couple of ways to provide uh, sewer for Hope Street. Uh, one, my budget included a sewer main down the rear of each property line, both sides of the street. Um, felt like that would be the easiest way for the homeowners to hook up to the sewer main. There's, there's issues with that. If uh, we would need to get an easement across the rear of every backyard and if, uh, one uh, homeowner 
didn't want to grant us that easement, then that, that plan would not work. The, the conventional method is to lay one sewer main down one side of the street and the homeowners uh, hook up that way. That would be uh, least expensive uh, for the city, but it would cost more for the homeowners to hook up that way. That's going to be, you know, going back to the land, probably the sewer, we're going to have to hook up in the back. That, man, that could be, what, $5,000, or $5,000 from the street back to their line we'll have to hook up to. Well, I'm, assume, to I'm assuming to. Uh, you folks have uh, septic tanks in your backyard. We do. So uh, a plumber would have to disconnect from that and uh, obviously come around the side of the house on grade and take it out to the street, which is a longer trip to run than if the sewer main were in your folks' backyards. But uh, I think either way, a plumber's, I'm just guessing, is it's going to cost a little bit for plumbers to hook up. We Mr. are, Hudson, we are they, aware of that. Okay. When they disconnect that uh, septic tank, that septic tank has to be removed, doesn't it? Uh, Councilman, I don't, I don't really know. I would think maybe they could be filled up with sand and left in place, maybe. But I, I'm, I don't. I'd have to get you a better answer than that. Okay. Any other comments from the council? Thank you, Ms. Collins. Thank you, Ms. Collins. Any other questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. <clears throat> thank you. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> you have affirmed I, I every you. vote for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> the what? You have affirmed every vote for the rest of the meeting. Good. <laughs> Let's back it up. <laughs> thank you, Council, for your support. Introduce an ordinance to appropriate $6,000 to come from the Riverboat Gaming Capital Projects Fund to be used to contract with Neil Schaefer Associates to provide a traffic impact study to determine the feasibility of a right-hand turn lane on Brownlee Road at the Airline Drive intersection as required by DOTD. First reading. So moved. Second. Mark. Is this something that we always required when we did turn lanes or? Well, in this case, uh, I visited. Or that was required of us, excuse me. Um, well, when we build a, uh, a turn lane that hooks onto a state route, we need to get a project permit from DOTD. And in this case, I visited with Jim Ollier, the traffic superintendent for this district. And uh, he asked that a study be done to determine if this was really warranted. And that's but what this is my all My question about. was, have we ever been required to provide this when we built turn lanes? Let's take, for instance, the first one yes. that we initiated on Airline Drive to I-20. Did, did we have to do this? I don't recall. That's a good answer. Well, I mean, I, I wasn't prepared. But um, it just—I don't remember to, having an ordinance on turn lanes that we've done. Because common sense says on that one there, that too much traffic. You know, we can get, get rid of it. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just asking. You know, when we spend money, that's our job up here is to ask questions sure. as to why we're spending. And is it, is it a necessity or is this just another? But this this is a necessity. We're not going to. I can't. Uh, I'm not going to be able to bring a set of plans for a turn lane on Brownlee Road on the airline drive over to the highway department and then give me a permit. They're going to want to know, is this warranted? Is it justified? Mm -hmm. and we, they're going to want to see a traffic study done. Well, just for old time's sake, can we figure out if this is the first time we're having to do this? I can. Thank I can you. get you an answer on that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a tax auditor, first and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions? Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. 
adopt a resolution to replace the personnel records clerk due to a transfer to another department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution to replace a vacant senior wastewater treatment plant treatment operator with a wastewater treatment operator. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution nominating for confirmation by the Bossier City Council, Stacy Fernandez, as the Director of Finance. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Can I say something? Yeah. Unless somebody else wants to say something. Please. No, go ahead. Stacy, I'm, I'm going to look at you when I talk a couple of calls. I'm for you as, as being our next finance director, 100%. I'm just not far with the mayor. For, and I, I spoke with the mayor a couple weeks ago. We had a nice, cordial conversation. And it was, you know, I enjoyed it. I'm just not far the salaries, starting somebody out at, at what a previous guy that worked for 10 years to get to that point. You know, that's just, that's one of my points. I think the other one is, is we've got <clears throat> other department heads who've been here 20, 25 years, you know, are, are still not to that point, you know. And I just, to me now, I just don't think it's fair. But I just want you to know that's that's my reason. It has nothing to do with you. I think I want to work with you. I, I think you'll be good. But it's just the salary that's, that's my problem. May I address that, uh, Mr. Montgomery? Sir? May I make some remarks? In yes, order? absolutely. Yes, we did have a meeting, and we, we disagreed, and I guess we're going to disagree about it here. Uh, there is precedent for hiring replacement folks at, at the salary of their predecessor. Uh, exceptions were made when... Mr. Westbrook passed away. Uh, Stacy was asked to step in and handle that along with other duties, and she did that for a year without any compensation, and finally was moved up a little bit, about 10, 15,000. But the records clearly show that that salary today with a man in it was about $105,000. The benefit package varies a little bit, but since the adjustments have been made within the Department of Finance, y'all have passed an ordinance showing that we are going to save over fifty thousand dollars a year, every year, as a result of these changes. And uh, talking to Stacy, that looks like there may be another fifteen thousand. So, my feelings is, she is a lady, but she is more knowledge. She is the most knowledgeable person we can get. And our finances is the blood of our operation. If they're not managed right, everything goes wrong. So, I think we should get the very best person available. And that's Stacy, and I think we should pay her at the salary of the her predecessor. I, just like I said, I, I'm far, but but I, now you, you bring up because she's a lady, and, and we paid the man that 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 to me that's totally out of line because that that don't even cross my mind, Mayor. Okay, just, then just disregard it. That's all. sense for the that the um, experience and the um, credentials that she has that the um, pay grade would match the job it's the mayor's recommendation I don't, I don't see anything that's unfair about it um, matter of fact it seems you know it seems like it's equitable that's my two cents Mr. Mayor, would, would there be ever a time that you would feel a person should not have the same salary as their predecessor? It, the, uh, there's always a possibility, depending what your potential who the uh, potential replacement was. So yes, there's always a possibility. But generally, generally speaking, no. We're running the city now on about 200 people less than we were about seven years ago. We've cut about 150 <coughs> spots out, as y'all well know. And on any given day, as you well know, we'll have about 30 people who are not available for one reason or another. You see that in the personnel reports. Then you've got vacations, sick days, holidays. So these department heads have had to pick up the slack, and they've done an admirable job of it and they should be compensated properly for doing that. So to answer your question, generally speaking, I would go for 
any replacement at the, at the salary of their predecessor unless there were some extenuating circumstances. Do you know what that would be? It okay. might be that uh, the persons that we had, the, the pool of people we have to pick from might be such that we're having to consider hiring somebody that's not the most qualified. CPAs are very expensive. So in this case, for example, I wouldn't want to hire anybody that wasn't a CPA, but sometimes the pool of people available might not have all the desirable characteristics, but that's one example. If I may, well, you, you, speaking of uh, the pool of people available, did we, was, was this position advertised? Did we go out or did we only advertise? And when, and when did we advertise if we did within the city? We, we did not, and as is our standard procedure, we look in-house to see if we have qualified people. Well, this was a very easy thing to do. When we looked in-house, we saw that Ms. Fernandez is extremely qualified. So it has been our practice when we have qualified people in-house, we can select them rather than going out for a, a different type of hiring process. And I'll say a few words that as everyone on the council is well aware of. I'm a former CPA. That was my field. And I can certainly speak to the responsibilities that she has as the chief financial officer of a business that, you know, $100 million business plus and, and managing the different enterprise funds and the different accounting systems and so forth and it is it's a tremendous responsibility and um, I can tell you that in the private enterprise world that that job that she <coughs> is handling right now and, and doing one heck of a job and providing us information and so forth would be greatly over the salary that we're proposing to pay her today. And, and I know that I don't like comparing, you know, that this is what the private sector is, because, but, but in this case, when you're dealing with a specialty, whether it be a lawyer or a certified public accountant, those are all designations that, that demand that they be compensated if they're competent themselves and able to complete the job. So. As a fellow CPA, I uh, respect um, you and uh, your position and, and what you do for the city. And in, in this case, I'm for uh, her being paid equally with her predecessor. So. What, what's, the, uh, what's the current salary? It's around 105000 plus benefits. That's... That's what she's earning now? No, no, no. I, I, that's what the yeah. income up would be. Stacy, what is it now? About the, well, come a step up and tell them what it is now and answer any other questions they may have. Uh, my current salary as purchasing agent is 74000 Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other? Questions from the council? Any questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of a tax auditor. First and final reading. <coughs> so moved. Second, questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one replacement police records clerk one due to a resignation from the department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one fire department line employee to replace one firefighter position due to a retirement. 
First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution authorizing the hiring of one fire department line employee to replace one firefighter position due to a termination. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution. Oops, sorry. Adopt a resolution to hire one recreation maintenance worker one to replace a vacant position in Parks and Recreation. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution to fill two vacancies in the Public Works Department. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution to hire one accounts clerk one and promote one position in the water billing and customer service department to backfill a utility billing and collection supervisor position. First and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt a resolution nominating for confirmation by the Bossier City Council Pam Glorioso as the city's chief administrative officer. First and final reading. So moved. moved. Okay. Questions? Will this, uh, Mr. Mayor, will this role that Ms. Scarloso will uh, hold uh, include the management or the monitoring of the 3P contract? She will be the immediate supervisor and director of public utilities and we will be working closely with their representatives. She's already been attending their meetings and been working closely with Ben, so she will be definitely involved with that, but we'll have oversight and involvement of the city attorney and I'll be asking him to also review and sign off in, on any ordinances re regarding public utilities. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I feel that uh, Ms. Gloroso has a lot of credentials and she will bring uh, stability to your office as she has already and I can I can see that my concern would be having someone who maybe have a background engineering to make certain that the uh, contractor that we have the contract that we have for the man shack that we get the best for our money and that may in the future include someone maybe with an engineering degree, maybe a consultant part-time even uh, to make sure of that. And I wonder if that's something that you've entertained. Yes, I've thought about the potential somewhere down the road. There might be some reason to consider that, but I sure don't consider it right now. I think Ms. Glorioso is so knowledgeable of all the projects going on in the city to include public utilities and have gone on her own to get with Ben and start getting brought up to speed on this and also having Mr. Hall involved for the fine details. No, they're not engineers, but I don't think we necessarily need an engineer. If we do, uh, then I'll come before you and ask to hire one. Mr. Oliver was an engineer, am I right? Yes. He is no longer with us. Yes, sir, I understand. But that's what he brought to the table. Uh, well, he brought a great deal more than that to the table, but additionally, he did have those sure. qualifications, yeah. which was unusual. Exactly. Not that I'm not in favor of you, Pam. I, I am. I mean, I'm just asking the question. We have an engineer, Mr. Hudson, we have the department head. You stay so busy. Yeah. So busy. Oh, I know, but I'm just saying it for some type Especially of consulting, like I think what <laughs> you're, you're speaking to is the expertise. I mean, at one time, I think Mark did run the, <clears throat> it, weren't you over that? Yes, so he was. He, he, I mean, from a, yeah. a, a, a referral, or not referral, but consultation and, Sure, I think Mr. Huston has more than enough on his no, plate right got, now. He you keep he's got busy, plenty of time. As a matter of fact, he told me he doesn't know what to do until 
after two o'clock. We, we so. do know Cliff's been a whole, Cliff did spend a whole lot of hours because we, we met with him a lot. I mean, I mean a lot of hours. I know. I know. And I understand what Jeff's talking That's about. And, and quite frankly, we, the administration, made the decision not to hire a replacement director for that department who was an engineer, and we've been doing, I think, pretty darn good, particularly with the expertise we're getting from Ben and uh, his counterparts. Well, sure. Uh, I, I mean, Ben, he he's has a vested interest. I, I'm sure we get what we need to get from him, but we need someone who, uh, you know, who may be on the other side of the fence, not, not on the same side, although we have a partnership, and I understand that, but we, we still have to think about the, the best for the people's money in that, that contract. Well, I can assure you, as we go down the road, Mr. Darby, if we recognize that we have the need of an engineer for public utilities, I'll be the first one to come before you and the rest of the council requesting that we acquire one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other questions from the council? Questions? Council, please cast your vote. Adopt the resolution authorizing the hiring of a sales tax accounts clerk three, first and final reading. So moved. Second. Questions from audience? Council, please cast your vote. Introduce an ordinance to appropriate $120,000 to cover the 2017 sales tax bond issue to provide for Benoit value drainage study and mapping to be used as required for proper future development of lands generally located north of I-220 and between Airline Drive and Swan Lake Road. First reading. I move. Second. Any questions from the council? Questions from the audience? Council, please cast your vote. And uh, a notice that we're required to read today. We are hereby the Bossier City Council canceling the June 27, 2017 agenda meeting and the July 6, 2017 regular meeting due to the lack of members that can attend the July 4th during that holiday week. All items introduced on June 13, 2017 will be considered for adoption on July 18th of 2017. Properly stated? Yes, sir. Notice given. Uh, and uh, one other thing, since we did adopt the uh, P3, our partnership with Manshack, um, and I, just for the record, I'd like everybody to know that we have saved through 10 months over $3.7 million. Is that correct, Ben? So uh, that's certainly ahead of the $2 million that we originally estimated. And, and quite possibly we'll hit over the $4 million savings mark, which is double what we had originally anticipated. So congratulations to Manshack, congratulations to the mayor and the water and sewer department and all of their employees for, uh, as the mayor said, doing more with less and making it happen. Have a great week. Thank you all for coming. Meeting adjourned.